Mascara. It's the most important tool in my beauty kit and today we are here with Dr. Jacqueline Belts, Jackie, who is a local ophthalmologist and the creator of Occhio, a mascara for sensitive eyes. Jackie, I can't thank you enough for developing a mascara for sensitive eyes because I am somebody who has very sensitive eyes and dry eye. So I really want to learn a lot more about Occhio. I've tried it. I think it's absolutely amazing and I can't wait to hear more about it. How did you come up with Occhio? Oh, well, thanks, Mel. It's so nice to be here. And yes, you are actually the perfect customer for Occhio because you're who I developed it for. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of my patients or people I come in contact with in the eye health world just tell me they struggle to wear mascara or it really irritates their eyes or they might be asking me advice on which mascaras they should or shouldn't use. And really, I just became sad that I don't like it when my colleagues or might tell patients or patients might be allowed to feel that they just the solution to this is they just shouldn't wear makeup because we should wear makeup if we want to wear it and if it makes us feel good and powerful and ready for our day i think it's really important and if we've got a sensitivity or a health problem sometimes those feelings are more important not less important yes and i love makeup i love beauty and i love luxury products and I couldn't find something in the market that was perfect for my patients. So I just decided to make it myself. Uh, I think you've done an incredible job. <clears throat> I've actually been wearing it for the last week and it is the most comfortable mascara that I have ever, ever put on. I don't know what you've done with your ingredients. We'll get to that. But I have found that this is a feather light to put on and I don't even feel like I have mascara on. So on the weekend when I wouldn't normally wear much makeup, I still wear mascara. And I want to know, how did you make it glide on so easily? Well, it was a process. And really, that feather light feeling is very important if you've got sensitive eyes, because you don't want to be feeling that it's heavy or foggy or weighing your eyelashes down. Yes. Yeah, it's important, isn't it? And also, some people who have more straight down the chasing lashes particularly enjoy that feather light sort of feeling. So. It was, that was in my product brief at the beginning, that I really needed this mascara to be really high performing, luxurious. I wanted it to lengthen and volumize the lashes, not to a real va va party sort of lash, but just a good everyday sort of lash. And I wanted it to feel like you weren't wearing anything because when you've got sensitive eyes, your eyes are feeling enough things. You don't be needing to feel your mascara as well. You really don't. And I didn't realize that um, I was aware I was feeling mascara until I tried your mascara and I realised that I didn't feel it and I thought, wow, I've never been so comfortable wearing a mascara. It really feels like you don't even have it on. But um, I actually beg to differ. I think this actually does add a lot to your lashes. I think this is a, a really ba ba mascara oh, and weightless as well. So I think you've uh, ticked both those boxes really well. But um, I'd also like to know a little bit about how you've made it for sensitive eyes. I think I read that it's got Manuka honey in it and I'm a huge fan of Manuka honey in the diet. I know it has healing properties. What does Manuka honey do as an ingredient in the mascara? So Manuka honey is really nourishing for the skin and it's been used in wound healing and wound care for a long time. I was gonna say centuries. I don't know if it's that long, but <laughs> it is long. And you're know, well known by, you know, um, wound health nurses and, and those sort of people to be very nourishing for the skin but it actually is also very nourishing for the lid margins and the eyelashes and also therefore the tear film as well so some people who have really dry eyes use manuka honey eye drops and it's got a natural effect um, in helping to soothe and calm the eyes so that's why that was one of my key ingredients that i really wanted to include the mascara is actually 90% natural ingredients. So wow. Manuka honey, that's one of them. And our Manuka comes from Byron Bay. Um, there's only a few places in the world, so really just Australia and New Zealand, where you can get Manuka honey. So even though the mascara is made in Italy, the Manuka comes from here. Um, and there's also other nourishing ingredients and conditioning ingredients for the lashes, like orange, mandarin, goji berry extracts. I love that it has all the natural ingredients that are just naturally beneficial for our eyelid margins and our eyelashes. I do too. And not only is this great for someone like me who does have dry eye and sensitivities, but I have a 14 and a half year old who has just started to wear mascara much to her dad's horror. And as a 
mum, it's become quite important to me to think about what kind of mascara she's wearing. Is that going to be a healthy option for her eyes? So to know that this is full of those natural ingredients makes me feel better as a mum and it makes me feel better about her sort of stepping into wearing mascara um, on a daily basis, which she is. She's very fair, so wearing mascara has been really exciting for her because she can see that she has eyelashes and she thinks it's great. Um, there's a few other things about Occhio. I absolutely love the colours, which I think you've chosen strategically, I believe. And the fact that you have Braille on both your business cards, on the packaging, uh, which I know you've really thought a lot about sustainability and all sorts of things. But the fact that your mascara has Braille on for the low vision community, can you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, sure, I'd love to because I'm passionate about this. I think it's really important that products are accessible to as many people as possible. And visual disability, you know, as you know, working in eye health, is it's an invisible disability. People can't necessarily tell from looking at someone that someone has low vision, but and therefore it can be difficult for them to get help um, or be independent in the community as well. And so I just think that every new product should be as accessible as possible. And, and I happen to be quite aware of um, people with low vision because some of my patients have low vision. So I tried to think of all the little things that I could think of to make my product more accessible. One, because I think it should be, and two, to help have conversations like this and raise awareness about the importance of visual accessibility of things in the community. So the mascara, there's a few things. There's, yes, the colours are chosen strategically. I mean, they're, they're nice bright colours, which I personally enjoy, but I also, the high contrast is not by mistake. High contrast is easier for people with low vision to be able to read. The logo Occhio, even the word Occhio has capital letters and the sharp angles of Ks because they're easier to really differentiate from the rounder letters like, oh, Occhio with Cs is Italian. Yes, um, and, I, and I've just changed that to K's to make it more visually accessible and a bit more unique. Um, yes, we, we have the Braille, that's just our logo, so that's really just part of the branding. It just says Occhio. And we also have this code that's here, which is a NaviLens code. Yes. And um, the NaviLens code is a particular accessibility code for people with low vision. So it's a little bit like a QR code, but you know, with a QR code, how you have to line it up and press yes. the right place. You don't have to do that. But NaviLens helps people with low vision to locate a product on the shelf. Fantastic. And it also tells some of the information. So I have this wing on the package on purpose so that the font size can be a bit bigger. But still, mascara is tiny. The font size is still small. The ingredients list is small. Yes. So if somebody with low vision wants to know that info, they can use the Navi Lens app and scan the code. That's brilliant. Yeah, it's quite good. And actually, um, it's uh, a little more uh, well known now because just over the last few months, all the trams around Melbourne now have Navi Lens on them as well. Oh. So lots of people with low vision already have the app because of that. And. I mean, it might not change the world just having a navy lens code on mascara, but imagine when every product at the supermarket has a code like this. Yes. If you had low vision, you could go and do the shopping independently, know which one's shampoo versus conditioner, things like that. Yeah, that makes a huge difference in people's lives with low vision. I love that you've, you've thought about it and included it. Another thing that you've done that you've included, which I have to say is sheer brilliance is that you've shaped your mascara on purpose, I believe, to be square so that it doesn't roll off the bench. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'd say I was obsessed with having square mascara. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. It was, it was actually caused a lot of difficulty because I, I, once I thought of that and how annoying it would be if you had low vision and your mascara was rolling away and you can't find it. It's annoying to all of us, actually. Yeah, well, it is. I mean, you might have your glasses on or you just might not want it to fall on the ground. Yes. Um, and so I was really obsessed with having square packaging, but I also needed the packaging to be uh, recycled because mascara packaging has lots of different components in it. So uh, it can be um, difficult to recycle at the end of its life. So it was important to me that the, uh, any plastic that's in it has already had another life. Yes. Um, so to find a, a square 
recycled materials package that also looked amazing was quite difficult, but I think we got there. Yeah, I think you've got there and um, yeah, you've really put an incredible amount of thought into it. And I have to say that um, I know your clinical trials were very successful and that uh, you didn't have any sensitivities in some of your clinical trials, is that correct? So yeah, what happened, we did we did a lot of testing on this mascara. So there's, mas there's testing that you have to do and then there's optional testing that I just wanted to do. Um, if I was going to say this is suitable for people with sensitive eyes, I really needed to prove that because well, for my personal ethics and because I really want the product to be good. Um, I wanted to be sure about those things before I put it on the market. So we did the normal testing, which is stability, where you make sure it's not going to go, go off or mouldy and then and be okay at all different temperatures. And there's compatibility testing, where we make sure in the lab that a, the mascara is compatible with the packaging and all the different components of the packaging. But what I did in addition to that is we did a lab-based test, not on animals because this is cruelty free, but a lab based test, just going through each individual ingredient, making sure, at least in theory, this is going to be fine for people with sensitive eyes. Once we passed that with flying colours, I knew it was then safe to test on actual people with sensitive eyes. So what we did is we got a whole cohort of people with sensitive eyes and they wore the mascara every single day for 28 days and an independent ophthalmologist, so not me, because I already think it's good, so yes. another ophthalmologist <laughs> had to um, examine them before and after, and perhaps even more importantly than that, the actual person's opinion had been wearing it, so the subjective data from the person about how they went. And what we were looking at was tolerance, to make sure that they tolerated this mascara really well and it didn't flare up or irritate their eyes in any way. And actually 100% of those subjects tolerated the mascara really perfectly Fantastic. and yeah that was amazing Ooh. results um so that really gave me the confidence to put it out on the market yeah i, I can imagine well i think it's just brilliant uh, we are very careful at Iber architect to recommend that everybody throws out their mascara at the three month mark i believe you tested this to the six month mark but what recommendations do you have as an eye health professional for people that want to wear mascara so I definitely recommend turning it over at three months. You're right though, we did test it to six because I wanted to make sure that it was safe after opening it for six months that it wasn't going to grow bacteria or have problems in it. Um, but especially if you have sensitive eyes, it's quite important to change mascara over at three months. And the thing is it doesn't run out because you can't use a mascara right up to the end of the tube because it won't coat, the product doesn't coat the bristles perfectly. Right. So it's not that your mascara runs out, you actually just need to remember to change it after three months um, and it is really important and um, there's, it's actually just been out on the market for three months now and there's a lot of people coming back already to buy their second one so I think that message is getting through which is really good. Yeah, listen to your wise advice. <laughs> well once again thank you for coming in and talking to us but most importantly thank you for your Occhio mascara my pleasure. I'm so happy you're enjoying it and thank you for having me. You're welcome.